Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're continuing on the series with reciprocating saw blades, and we're gonna be continuing thick metal cutting reciprocating saw blades, all right? A lot of people use reciprocating saws, and those saws are really only as good as the blade you use on them, right? You could have a really nice saw, put a really crappy blade on there, and it's gonna suck, right? So uh, let's be real, and that's what we're gonna look at today. So, can continuing in the thick metal cutting uh, area of reciprocating saw blades, Today's episode, we're gonna be focusing on thick metal reciprocating saw blades from Milwaukee Tool Company, all right? So Milwaukee Tool makes a lot of stuff. They also make accessories and their torch lineup is for cutting uh, metal, okay? And as we mentioned in this series already, we're going to be skipping all the easy stuff, right? Almost all the uh, metal reciprocating saw blades, even by metal, are going to be able to cut EMT, conduit, uh, uh, Unistrut, like basic screws, lag bolts, stuff like that pretty easily. And we're skipping directly to the hard stuff. We're gonna be trying to cut three cuts in leaf spring or spring steel uh, that came off an F-150. And we're gonna try to cut it at least three times with this bimetal reciprocating saw blade. Then with this torch carbide tip reciprocating saw blade, then we're gonna add NOS to it and use a nitrous carbide reciprocating saw blade, right? So what is NOS or nitrous doing on a reciprocating saw blade? That's what we heard to find out, right? Last time we saw a Milwaukee Tool add nitrous carbide to, in, to a, a blade, it actually cut really well. It really outperformed the rest, right? That was with the uh, oscillating multi-tool blade, the nitrous carbide oscillating multi-tool blade. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. The question today is, does the nitrous carbide reciprocating saw blade for, uh, torch lined up from Milwaukee Tool really stand out uh, against the rest? That's the question because this blade is not cheap. So if you wanna find out, stick with us. All right, so just in case you're not familiar with the Milwaukee blade, let's go ahead and take just a quick recap, all right? So if you're in the Milwaukee lineup, the torch lineup is pretty much uh, the, the blades that are designed for cutting metal. The AX lineup, the AX lineup of uh, Milwaukee saws up blades are gonna be for like wood and demo, like wood with nails and that type of stuff. But the torch is actually designed for metal. So that's how you know these blades are gonna be designed for metal cutting blades, AX, torch, they probably got some other stuff, but we'll talk about that later. So without too much further, let's go take a look at this bimetal one. So this is the Milwaukee Torch bimetal blade. This blade is designed for cutting metal as it, you see the I-beam here. This blade is made in the USA. It's a six inch blade with 18 TPI and the model number on this one is 5784. And just in case you were conf confused about, you know, what's gonna cut, it says right here, for metal. And as you can see right here, this is a bimetal blade with some teeth here. The teeth have a little bit of an offset. It's kind of got like a shark tooth type pattern uh, going to it to help, you know, really be aggressive in cutting some of that. But is it gonna make it through? You know, we're gonna have to find out. One thing I will say about this blade as we've used these blades quite a bit is that you see this honeycomb pattern you got going on here. It's actually stamped into the blade as a part of the blade. If you look at the reflection or the blade at just the right angle, you kind of see uh, that that pattern on the blade. Uh, what re what that really does, or what I think it really does, it really helps give the blade its stiffness and the blade like its strength, like the actual physical uh, strength of the blade, not the teeth, but the blade itself. So uh, that's something that we could take a look at, see what the marketing says. Actually, let's go take a look at it right now. Uh, so the marketing says this is the you know, has two times stronger teeth, that has a tough neck, and it is the stiffest with this grid iron pattern here. Okay, so. As you mentioned here, that's pretty much exactly what we were talking about, all right? So let's take a look at this uh, Torch Carbide Tooth Blade, which is for thick metal, as says on the blade. This is the Carbide Tooth, uh, and this is the six inch version with seven TPI. This blade is also made in the USA with globe materials and it's 5201 is the model number, okay? This, as we talked about earlier, has Carbide Teeth, has a pretty good offset. The gussets are pretty big to help pull some of the chipping away. It's got carbide put on the teeth of these blades. And if you look at the offset, the offset is pretty aggressive, okay? So um, with that being said, let's go take a look at what uh, this stuff is designed to cut. So as it says right here, this is designed for cutting 
thick metal. This package I got actually included the nitrous uh, carbide tip blade, and that one is designed for cutting cast iron, or at least it gives you three times longer life in cast iron. Does it give you three times the performance in, let's say, spring steel? That's what we're gonna find out, all right? So, uh, unfortunately, there was only one pack at the store, so we only came with, with this one pack, and we're gonna have to come back to this part later. But as you can see here, if you look at the design between the regular torch carbide teeth and this torch carbide teeth, they're pretty much exactly the same blade, okay? If we had to guess what the difference is, uh, it's not really gonna be much, but it may be the uh, chemical or the material makeup of the carbide that's gonna be on these teeth, but pretty much these blades are, are, are coming off pretty much the same stamp of the metal, at least, right? So, with that being said, this is the Torch Thick Metal Cast Iron Blade. The model number on this one um, is 5261, and this is the 6-inch version of the blade and 7 TPI. This blade is also made in the USA with gold materials. Obviously, we've kind of, you know, used this one, so you won't see that here, but it is. This part is just black, and it will say nitrous carbide, okay? And as I said right here, even the space gusts uh, between the teeth are pretty much exactly the same. The only difference probably is going to be the material in the carbide, but, you know, that's really for Milwaukee to come out and tell us, all right? So, uh, one thing you will notice about uh, these blades is that they are pretty thick. If you look at it compared to the uh, bimetal blade, right? Just looking at the top of the blade, um, you're gonna kind of look at it and say, hey, it looks kind of similar, but it's actually just a little bit thicker, right? So um, that's probably also giving it a lot more strength in terms of the blade uh, shape itself, not the teeth, okay? So without too much further ado, let's go into testing and see how these blades perform.
All right, so let's go take a look at the damage done to this torch blade, all right? As you see right here, this part right here is the part that contacted the spring steel. And as you can see, all the uh, blades on here, or the teeth on here are gone. It's pretty much flattened out, and you got pretty much a section of the blade that's gonna be doing no cutting, all right? Uh, that's no surprise. We don't really expect any of the bimetal blades to make it through the spring steel, so you know, we're gonna have to see if anything really you know, shows us off on that one. But if you want to uh, superimpose or overlay or underlay, or whatever you want to call it, look at it this way, you can see what the teeth should look like on this blade and what it actually does look like, okay? So, no surprise there. Let's go take a look at the carbide teeth because these teeth actually did get through the blade at least three times, okay? So you look right here, uh, you kind of got some of the teeth chipped. The carbide is chipped from the teeth but the teeth are still there. They just don't have all the carbide on them, okay? So this blade did cut through the material, the three runs um, pretty well. So we'll have to go take a look at those numbers later when you kind of see this darkening from the heat. So most people don't know, or if you don't know, um, the heat will get stronger or harder technically um, as it heats up and that's pretty much why this area here has darkened up quite a bit. So this is after three cuts. If you wanna look at what the teeth look like new, or what the blade should look like new, it should look like that, right? Versus what it does look like right now, okay? So, uh, there's still a good amount of life left on this blade. As you can see here, you could just adjust the part that you're cutting, right? Using the blade and just get more cuts, but you could probably also get more cuts out of there too if you were patient enough, okay? So, looking at the Torch cast iron blade with nitrous carbide, look at these teeth here, pretty much the same condition as the teeth. Um, of the regular carbide uh, nitro, uh, torch blade, but I will say these teeth are just a hair, barely in better shape, right? There's more teeth that actually have the full bits of carbide versus just the ones that have a lot of carbide chipped off. So there's a carbide chip missing there, got some carbide chips here missing, but you could probably still get more life or cuts out of this blade. Um, if you look at the blade up here, you know you can just use that part here. The one thing you will see a little bit of a difference on this one, right, versus this one, the regular carbide uh, teeth one of the torch, is that the uh, regular carbide tooth one has a lot more heat uh, hardening going on here versus the nitrous carbide version. Um, that's probably, if we had to guess, mainly due to the uh, nitrous one probably cut faster. That way it didn't have to heat up as much in that one section, uh, hardening the blade teeth there. Whereas this one probably cut a little bit faster. And you can kind of tell just by looking at the paint damage, right? Or the coating damage. The coating on these blades are pretty thick. They're way thicker than most other blades we've seen so far. And you know, they do get gummy and gooey as it heats up, especially as it's just moving in that motion. But a lot more of the uh, coating is missing here where at, or whereas on the uh, nitrous carbide tooth blade, more of the coating is left on the blade. Yes, you can see the metal under the coating right here, right? But more of the coating is generally intact on the nitrous carbide blade versus the regular carbide blade. Uh, this, uh, like I said, that's probably only just going towards the fact that the nitrous one just cut barely a bit faster. I don't know if the numbers are gonna say that or not, but that's what it feels like. All right, you guys, so that test was actually really fast. Some of those numbers went by a lot quicker than I had expected, okay? So let's go take a recap of the performance, all right? First, this uh, six inch torch bimetal blade from Milwaukee Tool uh, tried to cut through the spring steel uh, three times and it just didn't make it, okay? Uh, all three times, actually we really just ran it once, it just didn't make any dent in it, barely made a scratch. So we moved on, all right? So let's go see if the carbide torch makes any difference, right? So the, the Milwaukee carbide torch blade, model number 5201, cut through the spring steel just fine. This is a seven TPI blade. Uh, first run took 58 seconds. Second run took 71.88 or 18 seconds. Third run took 145.98 seconds. Wow, you know, the numbers there actually slowed down a lot. It took on a lot of damage as it was moving or cutting through the material. But if you take an average of the three runs, the average of the three runs comes out to uh, 91.72, right? So if you take three runs average amount, you know, that's almost a minute and a half per run. Run. This blade is made in the US of A with global materials or you know all kinds of materials. So anyways The question really is now does the nitrous carbide or does adding NOS to it 
um, actually make it faster. So let's find out. So the nitrous carbide uh, model number 5261, the six inch blade, this blade is also 7 TPI. On the first run took 24.15 seconds. On the second run took 30.20 seconds. And then on the third run took 38.77 seconds, okay? Wow, those numbers are fast, right? So let's take an average of three runs. Averaging the three runs comes out to 31.04 seconds, making each run average almost 30 seconds per run. And this blade is also made in the great US of A with global materials and the kinds of fun stuff. So uh, yeah, that was pretty fast, all right? So let's go take a look at the leaderboard and where does that put these blades, right? So the bimetal blade, we're literally just putting that last on the board mainly because it didn't cut any of them, barely made a dent, but it also costs about four bucks per blade, right? So we're just putting that at the bottom. Uh, the torch carbine, model number 5201, we're putting that blade actually in third place on the leaderboard right behind the uh, Lennox uh, laser CT, right? And then the torch nitrous carbide, as you would expect, took first place on the leaderboard with a, a score of 31. 1.04 seconds, right? So yeah, that was pretty fast if you want to say, right? So one thing we could do is you could add up the total number of time it took to make the cut and you could look at the board that way or you could just take the average and look at the board that way, all right? So uh, this is just the way we set up the board for now. We may change it depending on how it goes or how the series goes, but you know, let's go take a closer look at the board, right? So if you look at the torch nitrous carbide, the slowest time that it took on run 30 was 38 8.77 seconds, right? So yes, compared to 24.15 seconds in the first run, it did slow down considerably by the third run. But the slowest run, 38.77, is still faster, or no, not necessarily. Yeah, it's still faster um, than the fastest time from the second best blade, right? So the second best blade, which is the Laser CT from Lennox, took 38.88 seconds on the first run, and then by the third run took 93.73 seconds, right? So that blade also slowed down considerably, but nowhere nearly as much as the nitrous carbide, right? Then if you look at the torch carbide, the fastest run of the torch carbide was 58 seconds, right? And the slowest time run three, you know, probably had some heat hardening there, but uh, took about 145 seconds, right? So the fastest uh, blade, uh, fastest run on, on the regular carbide was 58 seconds versus the slowest run on the nitrous carbide run three was 38 seconds. So yeah, there's a huge difference between the nitrous carbide and the regular carbide torch, all right? So what can we say about these blades, right? So obviously Milwaukee makes a lot of stuff and they make carbide tip stuff as you would expect and their top tier nitrous carbide uh, blades so far we've seen uh, also what the multi uh, oscillating tool uh, blades was obviously first, right? So the nitrous carbide definitely makes a difference in uh, the blades. It actually makes them top tier. They're actually outperforming rest of the competition, okay? So that asks the question, right? Would we go buy this again? Yeah, let's go talk about that and just for uh, you know, disclaimer like we did buy all these blades. Milwaukee did not send us, nobody sent us any of this stuff, okay? We bought all this with our own monies, all right? So, to answer that question, uh, the nitrous carbide tip blade costs, uh, for the six inch blade, costs roughly around $17, okay? The regular carbide tip diversion costs around $12, and the uh, Lennox carbide CT or laser CT costs roughly around $14, right? So, as you would expect, or in this case, you actually get what you pay for. You know, the more you pay, the better blade you get or the better performance you get, right? So would I go out and buy this again? Yeah, we'd definitely go out and buy the nitrous carbide blade again. Uh, would we also go out and buy the laser CT carbide again? Yeah, sure, we'd go out and buy that again. You know, it's a little bit cheaper. Yes, it's a little bit longer blade. If you consider uh, maybe the six inch blade, it may be a little bit shorter and a little bit cheaper, right? But you can't go wrong with the uh, those two blades, right? The uh, torch carbide, you know, there's really about a $5 difference between the regular carbide uh, torch and the nitrous carbide torch, right? So is the $5 difference really worth the faster cutting? Not only faster cutting, but you'll probably get more cutting with the nitrous carbide, right? Because it actually, it cuts faster, so it'll probably take a little bit longer time for the uh, degradation of the blade to actually kick in before you can't really cut anymore. That's really gonna be a question you have to answer, okay? So, hope this video helped you guys out. We've actually proved in this case, the more you pay, the better you get. So far, that's true. We're gonna have to find out as we continue on the series. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have different experiences, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day. Hope this video helped you guys out. Get back to work, and we'll see you guys next time.